What's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Welcome to the Machine Masters. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a DJ Mustard type beat. I'll be using FL Studio Beta for Mac. And in this video, my objective is to kind of talk about sound palette, drum programming, and of course, the music theory that's unique to the DJ Mustard style of music that I've stumbled across. Um, his style is usually fairly simple, but all the power comes from the simplicity of it. It's almost like minimal house or minimal trap. Um, so definitely should be beneficial to you if you're stuck on a certain project and with some fresh ideas, or if you're in a beat block and you want to try out something new, this video is for you. So let's get started with the basics. Let's just do a simple drum pattern in a DJ Mustard style. Um, for most of his joints, he's in the 90s range, right? He's anywhere between 90 and 100 beats per minute. So I'm gonna use 96. He has a signature sound that he uses that kind of lets everyone know it's his track. And that's the Hey Vocal Chant. Um, I believe Little Scrappy, Little John, back when we had those kits, that's where that sound comes from. So when you're working in single time, meaning a tempo that's not doubled, such as 140, um, usually your chants are gonna go every third block. That's really simple. I'll turn it down a little bit if it gets a little annoying to you. And that's gonna be our backdrop for pretty much the bulk of this track. So we'll go ahead and rename it and in the DJ Mustard progression, as far as the instruments go, it's usually two bars. So we're gonna put this bar, this particular chant over the course of two bars. And what a bar is, it's uh, four beats or it's a situation where the snare plays twice. So for instance, this. That, those two snares represent one bar. Cool, so we got the chant laid down. Next thing I'm gonna do is usually on his drops where it's just the bass, there is a snap. So let's make a new pattern just for the snap and play that together. All right, we're gonna keep building along, just getting some of the background stuff taken care of. Um, one of the big things he does is that on a drop of every transition, there's a cymbal crash, right? So we'll just name this crash. It'll only be on the drop. And I have a cymbal picked out for that. Now what I'm gonna do is add some variation to this. Um, usually, when you're dealing with um, single time arrangements or things under 100 beats per minute usually, there's a change up every four bars or every eight bars. So this will be the fourth bar, that would be a change up. This would be the eighth bar, this would be a change up, depending on what you want to do. In the case of DJ Mustard, his change ups are usually claps. So let's make a new one and we're gonna do something called a rolling clap. We're gonna put that on the fourth bar, which is marked at the top. I'm gonna loop that up and I'm gonna pick just a standard generic clap. And the easiest way to roll into it is to represent the notes right before it. Of course, his is not that stiff, so he's using a smaller um, subdivision of time. So we go into the piano roll and the clap. We click on this magnet, which changes the size of our grid and we could try half steps instead of steps. So we're gonna find the notes that we're gonna use. We go ahead and copy them and move them over. Now it should move faster, similar to a triplet. And of course, it's not that obnoxious, it's not smacking you when you hear it in DJ Mustard song. So the easiest way to kind of manipulate that is to draw a curve. So at the bottom of Fruity Loops Piano Roll, this is velocity curve. Make sure next to control it says velocity. So that's our clap roller. Now to give it more impact for the downbeat or for the next downbeat, which would go here, we need to have some kind of transition effect. Sometimes he uses reverse cymbals, but unlike trap music where they use risers, he just uses big reverb claps. So we're gonna make a new channel for that too. Luckily for me, I have sound packs that already have reverbs on them. So I'm gonna use one of those. And if you don't have that, I have this assigned to channel 14. So if you're in FL Studio, all you gotta do is open up something like the Convolver. And under presets, you're looking for Hall, Hall Warm. Hey, 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 hey. 
So that's a much bigger sound, of course. So that because it's so big, I'm going to turn it down a bit. To give it more energy, of course, you're going to have the bass and the kick. So we'll probably work on the kick and the snare first. So the kick, I'm going to make two bars. It's going to have a little variation in it, nothing crazy. And I'm going to use one of these generic kicks. Nothing too heavy, though, because you don't want it in front of your bass or your 808, depending on which route you go. So I'm going to use this one since it's lighter. Cool. So that's the kick pattern. And now we're going to layer it up with a clap. And that clap naturally is going to layer with the snap as well. We're going to change the grid on our playlist and make this beats. And what I'll do is I'll pull all these patterns back. That's not the reverb clap. Cool. So far, so good. We're going pretty at a decent speed with this. Everything else you kind of fill in with percussions. I have different ones, like you can use a rim shot. That's completely up to you. The next thing we're gonna to do to give it more energy, of course, is usually high frequency content. So stuff like the crash, the big reverb clap, and of course, hi-hats. DJ Mustard pulls off his hi-hats a lot of different ways. Some tracks, if it's a slower beat, they're triplets and kind of slow. They're not filling up the whole pattern. And um, if it's a club track or something a little bit more energetic, they're straight hi-hats with some flurries or triplets in between them. So let's make one of those patterns. I wanna make this two bars so it has some more variation as well. Now I want to add way more interest to that hi-hat, so I'm going to right click on it, go to piano roll, and what I want to do is where my variations are, where my 16th notes are, I want to add triplets. So I'm going to switch my magnet to a third step. I'm going to zoom in where these extra notes are and get rid of it. And to draw triplets, you can just fill every note. Let's make sure our velocity curve is decent though. Now you don't have to draw every note, you can also draw every other note, which is kind of like a slowdown effect. Cool. Now to give that some more variation and kind of liven it up, I'm gonna enable a flanger. He uses this a lot and it kind of gives it that tinny sound. So on my hi-hat group, I have Flangus by FL Studio, and I just have a preset on it. You can use any one you want. Basically, you're going for whatever sounds good. Something like that. So that's the meat and potatoes of a DJ Mustard drum track, or that type of beat. And it is kind of unfair to say it's DJ Mustard's drum pattern because it's a drum pattern that's been used a whole lot. What he does differently, however, as a Bay Area person is the effects is different, the spacing is different, um, especially in his arrangement. His arrangement is uniquely minimal, whereas other Miami bass music and some of the old club tracks from the early 2000s, the hi-hats are playing the whole time. Everything is moving at a very consistent speed. So. Um, he's changed it up a bit by manipulating high frequency to slow things down, although the track is fairly fast. So now let's work on the music theory aspect. This is a little bit trickier because I've come across two patterns that you can use to pretty much get you in a, a DJ Mustard ballpark every time. So I'll name this one bass, but I'm going to do melody on it as well. Now, when you think about a DJ Mustard track, most of the bigger songs are not chord driven per se. And that's the trickiest part to teach a person how to come up with bass, how to come up with melodies without having like a one, four, five chord progression or not having that structure there. Um, 
but in a lot of ways it is there it's just not obvious when you're using your ears like if you know what he's doing or if you study old classic house like from strictly rhythm days you get a feel for the kind of things you can get away with on a keyboard and by limiting your notes for bass to three notes or limiting your melodies to five keys that kind of thing is intuitive but as far as teaching it to you i had to think outside the box a little bit and kind of explain this in a very unorthodox way so before you comment and tell me there's a name for it or there's something else to it i know there is i just don't know what it is so i'm going to teach you the way i taught me <laughs> so we're going to go into midi out go to piano roll i'll make expand this a little bit i'm going to switch my snap back to probably steps or beats and what i want to do is pick a scale most of the time it's going to be minor for dj mustard so we can go to helpers scale highlight we have natural minors, so now you just choose a letter. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to choose a different one. Um, let's say D-sharp. Now, there's something to pay attention to here. I'm not going to draw any sound. I'm just going to bring your attention to very key notes to use when you create something. First, let's talk about the uh, root key. In FL Studio, when you choose a scale, the root key is always the darkest note. So we're going to represent that here. Bass in these kind of tracks, especially house, is usually between the root note and the first grouping of notes that are next to each other. They're a direct half step apart. But on scale highlight, you can see this because these are the two keys that are white. Now, another set where this occurs is also above. And this usually takes place where the melody is. So you have the root note, and the two keys are grouped together below for the bass, then the root note, and the two keys above for starting the melody. Um, the next two are the same as the bottom, so technically this is just an octave of this. So we're going to include that as our background, so I can better demonstrate what's happening. Now I'm going to go to a bass, and there's quite a few different basses you can use. This is an 808. He usually layers that under when all the drums comes in. This is three osc with all signs, except for square. I try to do something different, but you can use sign and everything's turned all the way up. It's just a very, like a, a default initial initiation of three osc. And you want that to add bottom to some of the dance and house patches that doesn't have bottom. This is Omnisphere. In the Omnisphere search, all you have to do is type house and filter it by synth basis and find one you like. Here's Serum. This is called an organ bass. This is under bass. Organ bass. That's inspired by the Korg M1. And then I have Silent. More of an edgier bass, but if you play it in short notes, it works. So let's work on this. Let's work on a very simple bass line. We'll use the house one. I know my root notes to dark key, so let me start there first. And when you think about drawing bass, think of it like the rhythm of a kick pattern. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's play it with uh, some drums. Cool. Now I'm going to relocate these notes. And it's really simple. And it's usually just those three notes in any arrangement that you come with. You could rewrite the rhythm of these. You could do a different kick pattern so this works better. But it's normally this degree or spacing or that jump. And it works in any minor scale, which is the crazy part. And I'm going to break it a little bit because this note is a bridge to the first note, which would be here. So to really pull that off, let's extend this so it's not so abrupt and do it like that. So 
So this is still method one. This is using or picking five keys out of your scale based on their spacing relationship. The two that are close together and the root note. And this, and it's the same pattern in every minor scale. And it might be the same in major too. I just haven't tackled that yet. Because you know minors and majors, they have, they overlap. So now we're gonna deal with uh, melody. In this particular style where uh, you're using the root note and the two keys below it, melody is gonna be the opposite. So for my bell sounds, I have massive, which is good for bass too, but massive has some of the best synthetic bells, I think. Citrus, of course. And hybrid, which is by Air Instruments, has folders of bells. So I'm gonna go into the bell, piano roll, and now I'm gonna have the same concept. I have my root note, and I have the keys that are grouped two and two above the root note, which is here. So there's a few ways to do this. He usually starts on the downbeat, so I'm gonna do the first one. So now you wanna figure out a rhythm for the bell. So I'm gonna use this first one and then I'm gonna go probably to the next one above it. And then copy that over and maybe add a variation to the end. variations you add are it's completely up to you I'm only using highlighted keys that are in the scale and I kind of have a feeling for where they can be because they can't be anything else like between these two there's only one extra note in the scale that it could have been so <laughs> you get used to it when you draw and try to connect different dots I call it I'm um, coloring in between the lines I know these four are the main notes but then of course you can augment it and continue throughout the scale as you wish you notice this key is still on the two keys, so it's kind of like an octave, um, so on and so forth. And it's really cool. You, you can plug in different keys wherever you want until you get something you like, but the root of that melody is gonna be between these four keys, the ones that are grouped together. And because you can do that in any scale, you have tons of different melodies. They're not always the same. So your focus is gonna be on pattern. Like what's the pattern of the melody? Um, what are the steps? Not so much what the keys are. And I think that's why he can be so productive because if he or the guy Mike is playing that way or used to playing that way, then I know it's really simple. So that's one example of how to deal with that. Now what I wanna do is example two. This way is a little bit more intuitive because it's evolving itself around chord progressions. Now what I wanna do is draw the chords of my scale, right? And when I pick a scale, I normally start on the one, which is the root note. So I'm gonna start on this root note and come up with a chord progression um, just using root notes. Cause chord progressions are um, like, let's say one, four, five. This is one, this key is four, this key is five. And what your chord progression is, it's the chords that begin on these notes. And once you have that progression, you can then fill it in with the chord itself by skipping every other highlighted key as I've been showing you in the past few videos. So this will be a one, four, five chord progression. So on a DJ mustard joint, instead of using four chords like we expect from pop or two chords, which we normally anticipate in trap, I'm gonna use three chords over the distance of four. And what I mean is I'm gonna repeat the first chord twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that here at the end. Now my job is to determine where the next chord's gonna go between that. And you can do any of them. I find four and five works a whole lot. So I'm gonna use four, drop that down. So I'll make this a little faster. 
Now between this key and this key, I have one, two, and three. I can pick any of these three that are in my scale to figure out which one feels best. I actually like that move. So let me match this one. Cool, that works better than five. And basically you're just getting a feel for which set of bass notes or chords work best. So now I can go back to my chord joint and draw the chords in. Because then we're gonna use this as an outline for our bells. Cool. So that's, those are the chords and they would function as chords if you're assigning that sound to a pad or a piano. But in DJ Mustard's case, he normally doesn't do that. So we're gonna have to pick a different sound. Before I do that, I wanna give that bass some more rhythm. So I'd like to use Chop a lot. Chop is a tool in FL Studio that will subdivide your MIDI notes. And let me drop this down a range. You're gonna notice the same pattern here. There's still the two keys that are touching together on some of the chords. But what I pay attention to is the second note of the chord. So this one, this one, this one, this one. And try to place it in a decent spacing to kind of create the melody. So in this case, I want this to be delayed. And now what you're trying to do is draw the bridge between these notes to give it more interest. So that could be any of the keys or existing keys that make up our chords. For instance, this one. Now because this particular key right here is the same chord or f these are the same two chords, I'm not gonna end it on the same note. So I'm gonna see if I can end it on a note that transitions back to D, which would be the one under it or the one above it. Cool, so now I can split that up. Um, this is the, I'll make this the baseline track and put the melody on its own. I'm actually gonna stack that bell up an octave lower. Cool, so now we can work on arrangement just a little bit. I'll move this over. I'll put the bell in the intro. So he normally transitions into a very plain verse, right? 
But to bring more life to that, I would draw 808s in. Or I could probably layer it with a sub. So let's try to sub first to bring that to life. That works. But I still want the 808 just so it's a little bit more urban and a little bit more gritty. So we could draw it on the root notes of the chord or we could draw it on the seconds, it's up to you. Or whatever sounds best. Now I want to slide that. A lot of people ask me about slide notes on FL Studio is really simple. The first thing you want to do is make sure your 808 is set up with an envelope similar to these settings where release dictates how long the note is. Then click on the gear icon and make sure mono is enabled. Um, and sometimes you don't even need that. You just need to be able to draw the slide note. Now the slide note is these two characters here. I'm gonna click on this one, which at the top left will say slide. And I wanna slide this note probably an octave under. So we'll just represent where that is. And what you have to do to slide it, this slide note has to intersect a regular note. So where this is, line is intersecting, it's gonna drag it down. And you can do multiple slides, like with a longer note, you can probably put a second slide on it. It's completely up to you. And you're almost playing the 808 like it's a melody for club tracks because it's a lot more fun and you're not going to use this bass the entire track anyway. So I'm going to cut it out, make sure you save, <laughs> and I'm going to cut it out and make it on its own track, call it 808, paste it to its own track, boom. And then he goes back to the bells. So we'll bring it back, we'll bring the bells back in with just the bass line. And make sure you have the crash on each four bars or on each transition. Now this is getting to the second part of the verse, which is the next eight bars, because you know a verse is usually 16, and what I'm going to do is turn the energy up by bringing those hi-hats in. But I'm only going to bring them in here, and then I'm going to take the chants away, because they come back on in the hook, and replace it with the claps and the kicks. And that's pretty much it. That's a loose arrangement. There's a lot of different things that go into the arrangement, such as the artist itself. Sometimes he has 12 bar verses, sometimes he has eight and then a bridge, depending on what kind of artist's on, especially like Chris Brown and them, they have different vamp sections and stuff. But for the most part, you can just do 16s and wait for the artists to make those changes with the engineer or if they send you those ideas for changes. But that's just a blanket arrangement, right? You're alternating the drum patterns, you're alternating when the bass comes in, when the 808 comes in, and basically you end up creating all this energy, this minimal energy, without having to compensate with sound effects, chords, and um, extra instruments taking up the stereo space. It gives a lot of room for the artists to think of words and find their presence. And hopefully that makes sense, or hopefully you being able to see that workflow will help you with your own arrangements and your own ideas. Again, though, just for quick review, just make sure 
when you're writing hip hop or club chords, you don't use too many of them. Just use two to three different chords. And because you usually need an even amount of them, just repeat a chord and kind of just flow with what feels best. Use those highlighters and those guides to help you write around these chords. And there's nothing wrong with that. People who play by hand and by ear are doing that. They just don't intellectualize it that way. So this is way more powerful because you can see what you're doing and then execute. But anyway, I'm MG The Future. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely leave them in the boxes below. If you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe. If you want to reach out, speak, or need advice, you can reach us on Instagram. That'd be the best way. I'm at MG The Future. Be sure to also follow at Machine Masters. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, peace. <music>